Well, we're going to jump right into it. I think we've got a good group here. Um, if you don't have a piece of paper and a writing utensil or something you can make some notes on, grab it real quick. I'm going to have you write some stuff down in just a minute. While you're doing that, I'm just going to give you a little um, preview. So I talked about this in the meeting, if you were in the meeting this morning. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about accountability today. My role in the launch program is really the accountability coach. And I think it would be good for everyone to get a little clarity on what exactly that means, what I do, but more importantly, how can you be an accountable person in your business? Um, and it's not just giving yourself a hard time or getting yelled at for not doing stuff. There's way more to it. It's more positive than that. Um, and it can be very effective. So it's something that I'm pulling from the one thing today. Um, there's something called the accountability cycle there, um, which you may have read. There's also, um, it's a part of something called the three commitments. And it's one of the most important things I feel like I've done in my business that has helped me um, achieve my goals. Because it's one thing to be self-motivated. It's one thing to have some great ideas. Um, it's one thing to just put some numbers on paper and then you know, hope they happen. There's a lot more to it than that. And that is definitely something that has worked well for me and something that I recognize uh, when it's not working. If I've fallen off track, if my attitude has changed, I have really noticed a difference in my business um, in a bad way. So, and vice versa, once I'm back on track, I can, I can see things picking up, everything feels better. Um, so there's really some benefit to that. All right, so by now you should have something to write on. So um, you're going to probably need the whole sheet of paper or something a little bit more vertical. So on the top half, I want you to write five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. And on the bottom half, I want you to write five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Leave just a little bit of space for each. It'll just be one line. You're gonna write for each. So for the top, number one, write, I seek reality. I seek reality. Number two, write, I acknowledge reality. I acknowledge reality, that's number two. So you have, I seek reality, I acknowledge reality. Number three, I own it, I own it. Number four, I find solutions, I find solutions. So I seek reality, I acknowledge reality, I own it, I find solutions. And number five is I get on with it. I get on with it. On the bottom half, number one is I avoid reality. I avoid reality. Number two, I fight reality. I fight reality. So you have, I avoid reality, I fight reality. Three, I blame. I blame. Four, I make personal excuses. I make personal excuses. And five, I wait and hope. I wait and hope. So you have, I avoid reality, I fight reality, I blame, I make personal excuses, and I wait and hope. Now, I want you to look at the top half and think of a time when this was your attitude. When were you acknowledging reality, looking, what's going on here? Something went wrong. Okay, let's seek the reality of the situation. Okay, it's this is what it is. I'm acknowledging it. I'm accepting it as what's happening right now. I'm owning it as my situation, what I have to deal with. I have ownership of what's happening moving forward, how I'm going to respond, how I'm reacting, how I'm receiving this information or this change in situation. 
I'm going to find a solution. We're going to figure this out. We're going to come up with a solution and let's go. We've got a plan. Let's move forward. Somebody share a situation you've been in where this has been your approach, more or less. Small or big, we have all lived through some situations just in the last 12 months. So y'all have y'all have examples. Come on. <laughs> I think for me, it would just be, you know, making this leap in my career, you know, recognizing the job that I was at and looking at realistically, what are the opportunities? Where can I be in two years, five years? You know, what's my earning potential? And then weighing that against, you know, this new opportunity. So, you know, having to look realistically at, you know, what things are and what the solutions are and ultimately making that decision to, you know, jump for it. Great. That's an excellent example, Benji. How many other people were in that position? They were in a job. They acknowledged the reality of it. You know, they weren't feeling good about their job. They're like, what's going on here? Oh, turns out I don't like this. Okay. I'm owning this. I don't like it. I have the ability to find a different job, right? I can look out for something else that's going to be a better fit for me. Um, what is the solution to that? I got to search around, figure out what I want to do, see what it would take to become a real estate agent, um, you know, hook up with Katie Falk <laughs> and find out how to be an intern for her team, whatever it was to get to that point and move forward with a plan, right? Were you in a similar situation? For me, I was coming from managing restaurants. I was in a bad situation in the last place where I was. Um, before I could say toodaloo to them, they decided I was um, too positive for the environment, which they were right, and got rid of me. And that was a shocking scenario in my life as an overachiever. Um, and it was a moment of divided paths, right? Do I go the lower half of your paper or do I go the upper half? So what are some other situations you've been in where maybe the lower half is the route you went? No judgment. I've been there. Anybody have one they want to share? Yeah, I, I would say in my case, I was in commercial for 22 years uh, from 97 until 2019. And then I was kind of at a crossroads because I wanted to really get out of that for our niche was retail. So we did shopping centers, strip centers, Amazon. They obviously made their presence in the world. Um, and so I was kind of like, what do I do next type of thing? I was kind of avoiding the reality of life. I had some personal issues that were difficult and painful, um, which I won't get into. But then I thought I, I took a kind of a short term job with, you know, credit card processing, you know, unpleasant and, and many, many, on many levels. Um, and then through a, a friend, I reconnected, which, which led me to where I'm at here. But I did with, I was completely avoiding reality, professionally, somewhat personally. Um, and I kind of, I kind of fought it, like, you know, why, I, you know, a little bit of apathy, you know, who is fate to screw me like this type of thing. But yeah. and that, that is, you know, like, I'm, you know, feeling sorry for myself where, you know, I have it better than 95% of humanity. So I'm thinking, you know, I just needed some real, you know, reality checks and, and getting back, you know, I was just making one excuse after another. And then, and then, and then you, and then you hit a wall when you hit that wall, it can kind of hit you really hard. And so I just had to recalibrate after uh, divorce, family death, you know, I mean, it's, we all go through it obviously, but then, mm -hmm. then you have to get off your knees really, um, and stand up. Yeah. And so, uh, and it's, you know, not, not terribly difficult to do, uh, depending where you find yourself in life, but, um, you just have to, you know, find something, a kernel, Push on. Maybe, you know, whatever <laughs> it might be, you know, in my case, I'm a, a really good tennis player. So I thought, you know, let's concentrate on something I'm good at and, bring my level of self-esteem to a, to a higher level. And uh, yeah. I think I'm there right now, you know? Um, so uh, don't- That's avoid, a good example. Don't avoid what's what's been given to you in life or handed to you. Cause you know, we all get a shit sandwich every now and then, but just- <laughs> yeah. um, Well, you know. and that's, that's a good point, Tom, right? Like everybody has situations in their life, it, regardless of how they appear, um, especially with how social media is these days where they're 
you know, it seems like everybody's life is perfect and everyone's the best real estate agent on the planet and everyone's making a ton of money and their family's perfect and COVID didn't throw them off and everything is great. Um, we know that's not true. Everybody has their own battles. Everybody has stuff come up. Um, you know, the degree to which those things happen can be extreme or small. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the reality that you're in, right? It's your perception of the situation and it can hit you very hard. But what really, really matters is what do you do with that situation? There's a life change, there's a traumatic event, there's something that happens, how do you approach it? And what you're looking at on your page, um, that top half, that is the accountability cycle. It's in the One Thing book. If you haven't gotten that book, get the book. It's a good reference. Um, there's also a great podcast for that. But you know that, that approach to any scenario is a really good tool to have in your toolbox, that accountability cycle. And beyond just stuff that comes up in your life, this is so important in real estate, right? This is such an important piece of your job. Your clients, especially in this competitive market, if they're buyers, or even if they're sellers, because that can be an overwhelming position as well, stuff is going to happen, right? Helping people understand that they're going to hit some bumps in the road. There's going to be some walls in the way, hurdles to jump, hoops to go through, right? Preparing people to understand that is part of getting their mindset right to be in this accountability cycle with you. Um, and you're the one leading the charge. Brian talked about this today in our meeting, you know, just setting people up to understand what is going to, you know, potentially be a problem. And already you're looking at solutions. You're acknowledging the reality that the process of purchasing or selling a home is not perfect, right? You're going to make it as smooth as you can. You're going to make it as enjoyable as possible. But at the end of the day, there's going to be stuff that comes up, right? We're dealing with people and multiple people and big money and all kinds of emotions and then the red tape of a process. So just acknowledging the fact that things are gonna happen is a really important thing to help everybody understand and be on the same page. I'm trying to seek any potential problems along the way. Um, you know, To be very proactive is a huge piece of being an excellent agent and helping your clients acknowledge the reality of what's likely to come up is important. You know, you're writing a very strong offer for a buyer in this super competitive market. We know a lot of homes are priced under market value. So you're writing significant amounts over 15, 20, 25, 30,000 over asking price. Now it seems like looking at the comparables, we're about where we should be. We're landing about where we should be on our price, but ultimately that's such a big battle, right? highest price you possibly can, we're probably gonna have to revisit this at appraisal. <clears throat> Give your buyers that courtesy. Be the proactive one acknowledging the reality that you might hit a bump in the road at appraisal. Be proactive. It is way better to help people set those expectations so they can prepare themselves mentally than have it smack them in the face out of nowhere, right? That's when people get upset. So acknowledging that, owning it and saying, look, if this comes up, if we have an issue with appraisal, here's your options. We could renegotiate the price to appraise value. We could meet somewhere in the middle. You know, we could negotiate something that all parties agree to. This may mean that you have to increase your down payment. This may mean you have to bring a little more money to closing, but let's own our potential options if we get to that point. Solutions, I just named them. We can go a couple of different routes and worst case scenario, you have, an, you have that appraisal contingency, which is your door out if the seller doesn't agree to a price that you agree to. And depending on whether you give them the right to cure or not, that's a clean cut. That's a clean break from the offer. But you know, by then we're maybe 30 days in, 20 days into the offer, perhaps the seller will be a little more flexible at that point and acknowledge their reality. So let's move forward. Let's make the strongest offer we can. And then let's see what happens at that point. Let's keep in touch about it. Let's talk more about it. Now they're empowered. They're in that accountability cycle along with you and everything is likely to run smoother and everyone is already on the same page. And then, hey, if it appraises, fabulous. 
we move on. But you've already prepared them. You've already gotten them into that mindset. And that's so huge. Now, if you look at the bottom half of your page, you may have already come across an agent who likes to hang out in that cycle where they don't have control, where it's that idiot appraiser, where I can't believe that lender, blah, 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 right? Oh, this seller, let me tell you about them. Now, is that helpful for anybody? No, life is just happening to them. It's a constant string of upsets and disappointments and things to complain about. And I don't know about you, but if somebody starts complaining near me, I want to get away as fast as I can. I don't wanna hear it. I don't want that energy. Lord knows we don't have any space for that, especially after the year we've had, right? So keeping in mind and being aware of when you're falling into that cycle or if somebody near you is, right? And this can be small things that come up in your life. Somebody cuts you off in traffic, you're you know, stuck at a you know, stop sign because someone's not paying attention, they're messing around on their phones in front of you, whatever it is, it can be these small things or it can be something as big as how you're approaching this career. It could be as big as how you're approaching this career. Is it, oh man, the market, you know, there's not enough inventory and I just, you know, and it's winter, so it snowed. So like nobody wants to go to open houses. And so, well, and I, you know, I just started and well, I like, I don't have that big of a sphere. I'm not really from here. And well, here's another excuse. And this is why it's not my fault. And I'm not acknowledging the fact that I'm really not trying that hard or spending dedicated time to do this job or figuring out how I can make this work for me or being genuine about how I'm approaching things excuses, 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 does that really get you anywhere? Does it just make you feel bad? Isn't there enough junk in the world to make you feel bad? Yeah. So take the second half of your page. I want you to keep it legible because I think it's a good reminder, but draw a big X through it. Just say, no, thank you. I'm not going that route. Ugh. Staying in the top half of the page is super important. And I think having this visual is a really key piece to that. Having something visible, a reminder. I talk about this with your goals all the time, right? Write them down, put them somewhere visible. My vision board is behind me in my home office. It is a constant reminder of what I am aiming for, what I'm hoping to accomplish by the end of the year. So having something in front of you as a reminder of how to get your mindset right is a really important thing. Having this somewhere visible can be really helpful. I am definitely putting it on a post-it in my car because if I am to go the route of the lower half of the page, it's usually when I'm driving. <laughs> and I drive a lot. So it's good to have a reminder like, hey, this is just what's happening. Perhaps next time I could plan ahead and be more proactive and give myself a 20 minute head start. And then I wouldn't be stressed about being stuck behind this slow person in a one lane, right? So having that in mind, I think is really key. Now, the important thing about this, I think, is acknowledging the fact that this is all you, right? This accountability cycle doesn't necessarily involve other people. So this is one piece of accountability, right? This is something you can control something you can choose to do or not, um, something that you will need to regularly remind yourself of. Um, it's, a, it's a habit you can build is getting into that mindset. But there's more to accountability than that. Um, you know, having an accountability partner of some sort is important. I've mentioned that before. Um, I'm gonna check the checks. I just saw a couple things come up. Prepping buyers. Oh, I'm gonna work backwards a little bit. So Betsy asked, um, with the example of prepping buyers, maybe something to discuss at some point, how frequently in this current market are houses appraising under? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I have not come across it too much myself. Most of them are justifiable. And like I said, my experience, mostly being in that 350 and under range is that homes are being priced under market value. So those astronomically over asking price offers are actually market value. And if you're not sure, run a CMA. It's a good practice to run a CMA for your buyers. Yeah. Again, acknowledging the reality. We're in this crazy market. Instead of just being like, I don't know, the inventory is low. 
I don't know what to do. Everybody's writing these crazy offers. I have no idea. I'm just in the tornado. You can look at the statistics and say, oh, actually the stats say the prices that are actually closing are the market value. I have a CMA to back that up. I'm researching the areas my buyers are interested in. So I know what's going on. I'm taking control of the situation. We have the power of the knowledge that writing over asking is not writing over value. Um, and that's a strategic move on the listing side, which honestly, at this point, I'm finding you almost have to do if you want to get offers. It's bananas. So yeah, good question. But another example of that kind of a situation. Um, so like I was saying, having, having somebody else to hold you accountable is another piece of what will help you to stay on track. Um, so there's... There's a few things um, that I think that accountability partner is good for. Um, and I will say I can be that accountability partner. Um, that really is my role. So if you have questions about how the program works or can I talk through this scenario, Joan Reed is your person. Um, she was my person for four years when I started in real estate. She is a wealth of knowledge. She is amazing. Set up a call with her. If you want somebody to check in and say, okay, here is my goal for the year, my goal for the quarter. Let's work that backwards to weekly activities. Okay, every week, every other week, once a month. Okay, Amanda, I did my activities. This is how it went. And then I'm, you know, let's talk about what didn't go well and what we can do moving forward. That's my role. You don't have to call me as that person. You can find somebody else to be your accountability partner. It can be another agent, which I find to be really helpful because we understand, right? We're in, we're speaking the same language. We're from the same brokerage. We know what's going on in the market. So we can have a better understanding of what's going on in our businesses. Um, you know, that has to be somebody who's going to have frank, objective feedback. So it's nice to have cheerleaders. It is. And honestly, that is more so the role of your friends and family, right? Those people are there to be like, don't forget you're awesome. You're doing great. You know, forget that whatever dumb thing happened. Like, you know, just stay on track, stay positive. We we're behind you hundred percent, right? That's important too. But an accountability partner is somebody who needs to be a little bit more straightforward with you. So giving you frank objective feedback and setting the expectations that you're making productive progress. I'm gonna say that again. The expectation is that you're making productive progress. So it's not just, I'm going to the classes, I'm taking notes, that's it. It's, I'm going to the classes, I'm taking notes, I'm pulling something from the class, I'm applying it to my business, this is the activity, this is the one thing I need to do this week to make progress on that project or on building that habit or on making those connections with new clients. And here's where I am this time period later. Here's where I am a week later. Am I seeing progress? That is so important, right? It's very easy to kind of fall into a very slow drift off the road. Um, you know, if, if you've heard before, you know, you're failing so slowly, you don't even realize you're failing. That can happen if you're not tracking progress. And sometimes it really takes having somebody else to say, yeah, are you really making progress though? You know, did you finish that thing? You know, how did that go? Are you seeing a response from clients after you mailed that thing out and then you called them to follow up? Um, you know, did you do your follow up after the open house or did you forget and now it's been a week and now you feel bad about bugging those people and so you're probably just going to blow it off. Right. We're not all perfect. I've done that before, for sure. But is there something that you can really focus in on and make your one thing and see results from and have somebody holding you accountable to that. And if you don't get it done, acknowledge it. You know what. I was tired. I didn't give myself enough time, whatever it was moving forward. I'm going to make my open house block in my schedule a half hour longer in case I have late people. And also, so I give myself time to send those follow-up emails right after the open, then I'm free to do my next thing. 
now you own the situation. Now you're empowered instead of being like, I don't know, there's not enough time. And I just, uh, I feel bad. And you know, that, that can happen. But if you're really giving yourself that power, if you're in control and you have somebody who's checking in on you, you're probably more likely to get it done. Right. For me, that's my assistant. She runs our meetings on Mondays and she asks me every week, what's your progress on your top three? Did you get your most important thing done this week? And it is really hard to tell her I didn't, especially now that I have a team agent who I have to say it in front of. And, you know, there's, there's no one there to make me feel bad. It's just, hey, did you do this or not? Okay, why not? Did you not have enough time? Did you set time aside? Did you get distracted? Was your social media or screen time way over what it should be? Let's talk about this. Let's get you back on track. What's your next steps? How are you going to avoid this problem next week? So having somebody who's going to be a little more straightforward can be very effective. They don't have to be mean about it. They don't have to, you know, make you upset and cry. It's just somebody to say, did you do this or not? Why? Why not? What worked? What didn't work? What are you going to do differently next week? So that's what an accountability partner should be doing. And they can also help you brainstorm. Oh, I don't know what went wrong. I really want to do this right next time. You know, what, what could I come up with as a solution to this? Well, have you tried, you know, setting up a landing page like Brad? Now the contacts go right into command. You could save yourself time at an open house. You've got the numbers and names right in there already. And then have a plan that every open house, you send them something, you know, that day or the next day or whatever it is. Let's come up with some, some ideas of what you could send. Um, and, you know, they may have some expertise they can offer. So maybe this is a little more experienced agent. Maybe you're calling me, or maybe you're talking to a fellow launch agent who has um, more experience in a certain area or has had more transactions than you, or maybe comes from a background that can be really helpful. So it doesn't just mean an agent who's been in the business for years and years. So finding that accountability partner, I think is a key piece, a key piece to really making progress on your goals to really making strides forward. That is one of the biggest things um, that I find to be true with anybody who is successful in whatever they do. Um, it's why a lot of people have coaches. So it is a, a route that you could go. Keller Williams has MAPS coaches um, that are you know individual or they have group coaching options. It, there is a cost to that. Um, it's not an insignificant cost. It's a pretty um, big investment, but some people swear by that because then they are really determined to take it seriously and they see that benefit come back to them in commissions. Um, there are other coaching programs out there. There are other ways to find a mentor, but having somebody that you're accountable to can be huge. Um, for somebody like me, I don't mind letting myself down, but I hate letting other people down. So I need somebody else to make sure that I'm not screwing up for them. <laughs> so however you have to twist it for yourself, um, I think that's really important. This is another thing that I think is so interesting and could be done very simply. Um, if you've ever seen people on social media, like around New Year's especially, where they're like, I'm putting my goals out here because I wanna be held accountable. So I'm just posting it for everybody to see. Have you seen this? Have you done this maybe? So this is interesting. Written goals, just written goals, are 39.5% more likely to be achieved than the people who don't write their goals at all. They're 39.5% more likely to achieve their goals if they write them down. How much do you think that changes? What do you think the percentage is if they send progress reports to their friends? Just a quick email, a text, here's where I am with this. What do you think the percentage is? It's higher than 39.5. Any guesses? You wanna put it in the chat? I wanna see how close people can get. Benji, I can't let anybody in from the waiting room. I'm sorry. Hopefully no, it's he got it. Oh, good, okay. All right, any guesses? So 39.5% is if you write your goals down. What about if you send a progress report to your friend? Uh, 
Celia says 59. Angela says 49, Grady 67, Betsy 63, Teresa 70, Alex 70, Avi 78, Benji 62. Oh, we got some close ones. Avi, have you read The One Thing? I wonder if he's pulling it from I there. have not yet. Well, you're really close. It's 76.7%. 76.7%. If you write down your goals and send progress reports to your friends, this is not even having an accountability call. This is not getting a coffee. This is not paying a coach a thousand dollars a month. This is just sending a progress report to your friends. 76.7% more likely to achieve your goals. If you had those kinds of odds, wouldn't you pay for that? 76.7% more likely to achieve your goals. I could sell you that. And all you have to do is send a written update to somebody about where you are with your goal. That just blows my mind. That totally blows my mind. Does that not blow your mind? <laughs> it's crazy. That's a very simple act that takes very little time, costs you nothing, maybe some text rates, <laughs> but it's so simple, right? So much of what successful people do is not, it's simple. It's not complicated. It's not necessarily easy, but it is very straightforward, right? It's just a matter of being consistent and really owning the situation and knowing that you have the control over what happens in your life and it's not life happening to you. So take advantage of that. You want to send me a text about your progress every week? Do it. I will be honest and straightforward with feedback. Send your friend a text, send Joan a message, like find somebody who is willing to hold you accountable. And it doesn't require a whole lot of their energy either. And to be honest, you could do that for each other. It could be mutually beneficial, even if they're not a real estate agent. Everybody has goals, right? And then you can celebrate your victories together. So I think that's worth taking a thinking time about. I've talked about this before, having thinking time each week, setting aside 45 minutes, completely uninterrupted, completely un not distracted to really think about important things that you're doing to work on your business and on yourself and not just in your business. These are the important core roots of what you do and who you are that will make you successful no matter what. So spending time to work on this stuff is really important. So giving yourself a thinking time this week to think about who could be your accountability partner, about how you could work that accountability into your schedule. Is it part of your weekly reflection? Is it part of your daily closing out of your work day? Is it part of your morning rev up for the day? Whatever it is, give yourself that opportunity make it known, <laughs> hey, friend, I'm gonna be sending you a text every week with where I am with this one goal I'm working on. Would you mind just giving me some honest feedback about that? Maybe we could have a chat this week and talk about what my goals are. And then if you want, I'd be happy to be your accountability partner. Like who would love to get a call like that from their friend? Hey, I am really vested in your success. I wanna see you achieve all your dreams, all your goals. I'm here for you. I hear that you're 76.7% .7 more likely to achieve your goals if you have accountability. Just sending a note to your friend makes you that much more likely to succeed. Would you be interested in being that person for me? I would be flattered if somebody asked me that. I would be so game. Who doesn't love to help people achieve their dreams, right? So take the time to think about that this week. Who could that person be? You know, take the time to send me a text, take the time to figure out who in the launch group would be somebody you could do this with, or maybe more than one person, but giving yourself some thinking time to really focus in on, okay, what's the one thing I need to work on and how can I hold myself accountable? It is worth taking the time to do that kind of stuff. It feels self-indulgent. It is not. It is so important to giving you that good base to work off of so that when you get knocked off course, when bad things happen, when the market goes crazy, when you've lost your fourth offer attempt, 
then you've got a good base to work off of, right? You go back to that top five, that top half of the page. How am I going to approach this situation? I need to get back on track. I've fallen off track. I've kind of lost my accountability to myself. I need to redirect. It's a constant correction, right? It's not like you said it and then it's good forever. Um, but having these reminders, having an accountability partner in place, holding yourself accountable and knowing you've got the power to decide what happens, that you can focus on what you can control, that's huge in your business and in your life. So worth taking the time to do that, definitely. Own your outcomes. That's huge. So does anybody have... Um, some thoughts on what they're going to do moving forward the rest of this week to help them build that accountability or to be more accountable to themselves. Anybody want to share their plans so that they are held accountable? I want to leverage my social media a little bit more. So I'm going to try this afternoon to kind of work on a um, social media calendar, um, try to get, you know, weekly posts out. I've been following good real estate accounts that, you know, post good tips and little things that you can throw in your story um, to try to get, you know, some engagement with your following. That's great, Benji. Yeah. Not just saying, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my social media when I have time. Oh, I just don't have time. Or like the Wi-Fi was bad, or I didn't have a good picture that day or whatever, setting up a calendar in advance. You're taking control. You have a plan. You recognize that it's not as good as it could be um, and that there's some benefit to doing that. So that's a great idea. Anybody else? What's your, what's your plan for the week? How can we hold you accountable? I've, I've been talking to Amanda the last three or four weeks and it's been extremely helpful because organization is not my strongest suit, but she's, we have a very a firm but pleasant conversation and it works yes. out uh, very well. And <laughs> usually at the end of the week to summarize and, you know, give me a boost for the following week, which I very much appreciate. So. Great. And I got your message. We'll set that okay. up for Friday. Okay. <laughs> I've been using anyone else. Yeah. I've been using a 10 four tracker. Um, it's a little bit more in depth than the one in ignite because it asks you to track like the appointments you set and the um, appointments you actually attend and your closings. Um, but some days like it's easy to start out at the beginning of the week, filling it out. And then like by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm not filling it out. So then Monday rolls around and I'm like, oh shit, I'm behind. Like, so I think I'm going to screenshot on Sunday, like the tracker. And if there's zeros, there's zeros, but I'm going to like actually send it to someone to hold me. That's a great idea. My mentor. Can you, for the people who don't know what a 10 for is, can you give like just a little synopsis of kind of how you're approaching it? Yeah, it's just um, something from, I think the one thing book, but we use it in Ignite and um, you are tracking four sets of 10 things. So 10 connections a day, 10 handwritten notes a day, um, 10 calls a day, I think is the other one. And uh, what's the other one? 10 calls, 10 notes. I, it's view homes too, right? Yes, view like homes. homes. Yeah. Or, yeah. Just like, yeah. Yeah, which, and to some extent, you know, the reality of what's happening right now makes it a little bit harder for that home viewing piece, right? Like you used to be able to knock that out during broker tour, which some of you probably don't even know what that is because we haven't had it for so long. But on Tuesdays, we would have um, open houses all over the North Shore and some other areas um, between 11 and 1 that were specifically for agents. And so we'd like hop in a car together and like go bum around and check out everybody's listings. And it was kind of like an opportunity to like, network with other agents, get a snack, see some cool places. Um, we haven't been able to do that. So it's a little bit harder to pull off now, especially with how tight showings are. But um, yeah, acknowledge the reality, figure out a way to work within that. Um, but yeah, that 10-4 is a great thing to use. It's, it's already set up for you. Um, and it sounds to me like Celia, maybe midweek would be a good time to have an accountability check-in because that's when you lose momentum, kind of fall off yeah. course. Probably, yeah, around Wednesday would be good, maybe. Yeah, and then maybe again at the end of the week. I, I find myself, and I'm sure all of you do too, when I know my meeting's coming up on Monday, I'm all of, all of a sudden like, oh, geez, 
what did I not do? I got to get real focused now because I have limited time to get this done before Monday. Or I'm going to look like a jerk, you know? So I'm like Monday morning, I'm like finishing my notes before I talk to Liz. I did my notes. You don't have to know when I got them done. <laughs> so even just having that, you know, a couple of times a week might help. Anybody else have a plan for the week that they're looking for accountability on or something they're going to do to help build that accountability out? So, uh, I mean, I, I'm still trying to, you know, build command, like I'm trying to get as many contacts as possible uh, in command. So I've been doing like a social media, like messenger touch, basically, I have like a script. Oh, hold on one second. God, that's not. Oh, <laughs> my bad. I was, it's like lunchtime for virtual learning. So I had some macaroni going on in the back. And it was okay. oh. <laughs> so uh, back to the uh, thing. So I've been, uh, trying to add at least like or message 10 people uh, through uh, social media and then adding them to command. I'm also doing like a little like promotional giveaway like during the uh, Super Bowl, like a big game giveaway to kind of like attract people uh, for that. So I did like a Google submission form uh, that like, you know, gets email and information that can like kind of just uh, place into command. So again, building that, but also uh, trying to, instead of just, because I like to post in the groups, like, you know, to help out for coverage on the Oakland houses and things, but I kind of want to more so attack it now, like more so just like, instead of asking, just be like, yo, I want to do an open house at your listing this weekend. Is that fine? Instead of, you know, just kind of waiting and that like number five on the bottom really like struck a chord that waiting and hope because that does happen a lot yep. with me. Yep. That's good. So I have two questions, Grady. One, how many people do you have in command right now? Uh, I would, I know it's, I want to, hold on, let me see. I, to, I think it's, a, I, I know I'm 100, but it's not like three, I, I want over 350 people in command. That's my like goal. So your goal is over 350. And how many contacts do you hope to get from your Super Bowl giveaway? I think that's a great idea. Uh, I want to have at least 75 hopefully 75 I, I have it as like you know like the like you know like my business page fill out the thing if the two you know match then you know you can be entered into the drawing so you know 75 would be ideal but anything more than that like I'd be extremely excited about and have you started posting about this already yes I posted okay. uh yesterday uh on my business page and then shared on my page cool how many contacts do you have or how many people signed up so far <laughs> So far, I have six. Okay. So six you've got responses. until next Sunday yep. to get 69 more names. Yep. So what are you going to do to make that happen on a daily basis for the next, what do we have, five days? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be, you know, also like uh, sending out texts, uh, not just relying on social media, you know, uh, when I, and maybe if I am doing like, you know, that social media touch to also be like, hey, you know, also, you know, maybe take that part of the script out where I ask them for their name and email. I'm like, hey, also, you know, go check out my page. You know, I'm doing, you know, a gift card giveaway um, during the Super Bowl. Love for you to, you know, fill out and have a shot at it. Who does love Amazon? You know, something like that. Cool. So you've got a little less than six days to get 69 names. So you need, I don't have a calculator on me, a little about more like than a, 10 a day. It's like about 12, I would say, what, like 12 times two? So 70, 12 a so day. About 12 and a half, yeah. So to get 12 a day, what's the one thing you have to do each day? We, or I, I mean, just talk about it. Always just, I don't, I don't, maybe I don't know. So if you, if your focus is to get that contact information, then posting about it on your social media, maybe more than once a day, if you can do it okay. in a creative, non-obnoxious way, and also okay. um, reaching out to people directly, that texting people, you know, if you can send them the link to fill out that application right then and there to make it easy, or just say, text me back your address, phone, you know, address and email, I'll get sure. you in the drawing. If the goal is to really hit 75 by the end of Sunday, then your activities need to be really laser focused on that. You know, it's a bonus if they like your page or whatever. Definitely. But really, really knocking it down to like, what am I doing each day to get me to that point? And at the end of the day, do I have my 12 or not? Do I need to adjust what I'm doing tomorrow? Do you guys see what I'm doing? This is accountability. 
I'm not being judgmental. I'm not making him feel bad. I'm making him think about it. Really focus in, right? Constructive feedback. How can you see incremental growth towards your goal, right? How can you make those steps towards your goal? That's a great idea. What are you giving away, by the way? Uh, $200 Amazon gift cards, one at half oh, time and one at the end. Yeah. Cool. So that's a big investment on your part too, right? So you really want to make sure this works. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So you've got, you've got not just your time and energy invested into this, but some money. So it's really going to be worthwhile if you can get that 75 contacts, right? It'll Definitely. feel amazing, right? Definitely. So when you're feeling a little beat up by the process or distracted, or you just don't feel like reaching out to people today, think about how you're going to feel when you get those 75 contacts. For sure. Cool. That was good. Thanks for being my guinea pig, Grady. No, no problem. <laughs> awesome. So I, I highly encourage you to take the time this week to figure out your accountability partner or process so that you really are not just necessarily reporting what you're doing, but having somebody who's going to ask you specifics like that, right? It's easy to say, well, this is kind of what I'm thinking. I, I do that all the time. Oh, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. I had a coach for a while with another company and they would call me and ask me about my activities. And I was like, well, you know, I'm doing this and that. And I kind of kept it vague on purpose. And then they would ask me to be more specific and then break it down even more specific and break it down even further. And we're getting back to that. Like, what's the one thing you have to do today? How are you going to measure your progress? That's what it comes down to, no matter what you're working on. So having somebody there to do some of that directing and questioning can be really helpful. So it's worth taking the time to figure out how you're going to have that for you, whatever that looks like. If it is a coach, if it is a partner, if it's setting up a call with me, um, it doesn't have to take a long time. You know, my calls are 20 minutes because we're getting right to it. What's your goal? What's your progress thus far? What worked and what didn't? What are you going to change? What's, what's your plan moving forward next week? It's really that straightforward. So hopefully this gave you some things to think about. Hopefully this gave you a good visual reminder that you can choose how you respond to any situation. Some can be much harder to pull yourself out of than others. And we recognize that, but when it comes down to it, it is the most empowering to think about what you can control what you can do moving forward. And it all starts with just seeking the reality of the situation, acknowledging and owning it, and then making a plan. I'm in charge. I can decide how this happens, or I'm going to focus on what I can control. And this is what I'm going to do moving forward. And if you're talking about goals or your business or getting back on track with something in your life, having somebody to hold you accountable is a big piece of that. And it takes a lot of the responsibility, um, you know, it gives you the responsibility of being in control of how you respond to the situation, but it also gives you somebody to help hold you upright and hold, help hold you accountable. And that's, that's huge. And there's no shame in that. Every successful person has mentors and coaches and people that hold them accountable. Um, and so you should too, right? It doesn't have to be big and fancy. It can just be somebody, you know, a friend, another agent, however it works for you. Um, but figure something out to hold you accountable. You will see results faster, you will be more effective, you will better use your time, you will have a much clearer idea of how you should behave in the moment, you're going to become more purposeful, right? Oh, shoot, I need to get this many contacts, right, for Grady, I need to get this many contacts, but now we have to think about it from the perspective of what am I going to do each day? Oh, gosh, what am I going to do each day? I have to really be purposeful with my time, I only have six days left, you know? So it's, that's a great example. And thank you for um, letting us use your example, Grady. Um, but hopefully you will find something that you are working on in your business that you can approach in a similar way. Don't try to do 50 things at once. Just pick one thing and go from there. Build that momentum. All right. Anybody have any other questions or things they want us to know to hold them accountable? All right, I'm gonna put my phone number in the chat in case you don't have it to text me. That's for a 20 minute call. Ideally, when you reach out to me, you've got some idea of what your goal is and you've broken it down as far as you can or you've done what you can to kind of set it up 
as your focus and I'll help you sort through that. And then we'll set up an accountability. And I ask people to just reach out to me weekly, ideally the week before or at the beginning of the week. So we can set up that 20 minute call. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you so much to those of you who participated and had your cameras on. Um, that is so helpful, I think, to everybody here to have those real life examples and to hear what you're working on. Um, so thank you for taking the time to share and be a little vulnerable with us. Um, we really appreciate it. And like I said, if you want to set up an accountability call, send me a message. Um, Tom gave me a ringing endorsement. So you know it works, but if that's not your jam, just figure out what will work for you. I really think this is worth your time and consideration and I really do think you'll see results. Um, and I don't know about you, but I'm gonna take that top five and put it on a post-it note in my car and I'll let you know how that goes next week. <laughs> so have a great week. Thank you again for coming. Thank you very much. You're Thanks. welcome. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. You're welcome. <laughs>